Hello, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Garland Jarman, the founder of Spiritual Eros. In my practice, one of the main issues that clients present with is an inability to effectively communicate what they need, want, and desire from their partners and within their relationships. On the adverse side of that is the inability to also hear and listen to the desires, needs, and wants of their partners. In this video, I wanna share with you a great tool for helping you communicate your desires more effectively. If you have not yet watched my video on shame, I highly recommend that you take the time to do so. Shame is the fear of not being good enough or measuring up to some standard ideal or position. As I stated in those videos, shame negatively affects the fifth or throat chakra. This chakra is responsible for how we express our ideas, beliefs, and opinions. It's also the seat of our ability to ask for what we want and verbally express our power, agency, and consent to others. Unfortunately, shame undermines and cripples this ability to state our needs, wants, and desires from a whole and solid place of this internal power and agency. So before we can ever have healthy and edifying communication with the ones we love, we must first face and heal the issues around our own shame. Next is the issue of honesty. Here's a question. How honest and open are you able to be with your partner? Really? When discussing the issue of honesty, vulnerability and safety both come up. Being able to communicate openly and effectively with your partner requires safety in being vulnerable. Too often, however, even after years of being together, partners can often find this level of safety difficult. I have encountered many people in relationships where lying, secrecy, and silence are the norm. The reasoning is often this. If I share with my partner what I really feel, what I really want, what I've done, or what I'm really into, they will reject me, leave me, or abandon me. I will be shamed or guilted. Too often, I have found that the shame and guilt we are so afraid others will pass on us is already the shame and guilt we are already passing on ourselves. And here is a lesson to remember. You will often attract to you people who will reinforce your own fears, shames, and shortcomings. In the same way that a negative outlook will often attract a negative situation, shame will often attract people that will buttress your own shame message of inadequacy and perceived failings. This is often why people jump out of one bad relationship into another and another and yet another. Until you can heal your own shame and become comfortable in your own power, desires, and wants, it will be very difficult to fi fully find or embrace someone else's acceptance of you. So how does one begin to openly and effectively communicate with their partners what they need, want, and desire in the face of the guilt messages that what we desire is bad and the shame messages that we aren't good enough? First, let's remember that shame cannot exist in a loving, compassionate, empathetic, and accepting community. Shame can only thrive within judgment and criticism. So it's important that in order to learn how to communicate your needs, you must first learn how to create containers where neutral conversations can occur. Neutral conversations are those where judgment and criticism are suspended and listening, compassion, and understanding are encouraged. If your desire for your partner to know or do something with you is couched within your fear of being judged or criticized, say so. Almost nothing disarms critical and shameful judgment than exposing its potential from the get-go. For instance, let's say that you want to receive a back rub from your partner, but you are afraid that your request will be, will be met negatively. You might first want to approach your partner by saying, Hey babe, I want to make a request and I'm also afraid of being judged for it. So I ask that you hear my request without judgment and answer yes or no if this is something you would be interested in. You can also use this approach if you desire to share other aspects or information about your life, your sexuality, or just ideas, but are afraid your partner would not respond in kind. Prefacing your request in this manner can often set the stage for your partner to hold you with greater compassion and a willingness to listen and understand deeper. And if your partner is truly interested in loving you better, this preface can also gently prompt them to inquire into why you might be afraid of asking in the first place, which in turn can potentially help you both explore your own shame and fear in a loving and supportive way. 
This approach can also be used for those who feel that asking for what they want is selfish and for those who find it hard to receive. This inability can also be the product of internal shame and guilt messages. Because shame does not like to be named, a great way to combat it and to receive what you desire from your loved ones is to name the resistance that prevents you from getting what you need. Openly, honestly, and sincerely. Remember that deep and lasting intimacy requires vulnerability, and vulnerability requires safety. And knowing that you are safe often requires communicating and creating containers where your expressions, desires, wants, and needs are shared without ridicule and judgment. And building containers of trust and safety often requires speaking up about your fears and asking for a non judgmental response to your desires. So, this concludes my discussion on how to better communicate your desires. Please feel free to write me at spiritualeros.com or leave your comments and questions below if what you've seen, heard, or felt today resonated with you. And as always, please check out our website at www.spiritualeros.com and subscribe to our channel to be notified of future talks. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.